Praise God. Welcome. Welcome to Lakeshore Assembly, everybody that's here this morning. We have the, let's give a warm welcome for our Teen Challenge men. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So today we're going to have a unique thing. It's going to be, uh, remember a year ago we had like a political rally without politics? That was fun, wasn't it? So today we're going to have a missions rally, and we're going to give God praise for missions and giving to missions and being involved in missions and people that go and reach people for Christ. Hallelujah. So uh, why don't we open in prayer? Praise God. Father, we want to give you the praise and glory. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be very glad in it. So Father, we just come to you and, and we just want to give you our attention, our affection this hour, and that you would receive all the glory from our hearts and our lives as we now worship you with all our might. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Hey, if you could, those that are able, let's stand as we begin to worship this morning. Hallelujah. And by the way, we're going to have a special uh, tag team preaching today. Brother Murray Brown's going to be here. He's going to preach first, then he's, he's going to tag team me. Now, if you don't know who Murray Brown is, Murray Brown, yeah. Yeah, it's in the thing. Um, Brother Murray Brown, a 45-minute sermon for him is simply the introduction. Okay, hour. He has preached four-hour sermons out there. Has anybody ever heard a four-hour sermon? Yeah. Six-hour sermon. Okay. This guy's a preaching machine. But I'm going to go up and stand by him when his time is up as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so... So let's just say your roast won't burn at home, okay? Hallelujah. Amen? Praise God. <laughs> wow. Worshiping the fuel for missions flame We're going with a passion for your name We're going for we care about your praise Send us out Let worship be the heart of missions aim To see the nations recognize your fame Till every tribe and tongue voices your praise Send us out should be the praise of every tongue. You should be the joy of every heart. Yeah. You should be the praise of every tongue. You should be the joy of every heart. But until the fullness of your kingdom comes Until that final revelation dawn Send us out Let worship be the fuel for missions flame We're going with a passion for your name we're going for we care about your praise. Send us out. The worship be the heart of mission's name. To see the nations recognize your fame. Tell every tribe and tongue voices your praise. Send us out. You should be the praise of every tongue. You should be the joy of every heart. You should be the praise of every tongue. Jesus, you should be the joy of every heart. But until the fullness of your kingdom comes, until that final revelation dawn, 
Send us out, send us out. 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 For mission flame, we're going with a passion for your name. We're going for we care about your praise. Send us out. The worship be the heart of mission's aim. To see the nations recognize your fame. Till every tribe and tongue blesses your praise. Send us out. Send us out. Send us out. Send us out. Praise you, Lord. We just give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, you call people to do things. You call us to go. You call us to be missionaries in our own backyard sometimes. Just because we don't go to a foreign country doesn't mean that we aren't on a mission. The mission is always in front of us. So, Lord, this morning, if there's anyone that has felt like they needed to say something or do something but they haven't had the guts to do it. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would give them the boldness yes. to step Amen. out and to do what they're called to do. Even it's, if it's just giving a cup of water to somebody because it won't lose its reward. Lord, in Jesus' name, right now, let your Holy Spirit fall upon us. Let your Holy Spirit move upon us. May we receive from on high the blessing and the benefit and the, the, the sending out to going to our nation, Lord. Because our nation is a mission field. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Take our hands, move our feet, break our hearts with the things that make your heart break. Take our hands, take our hands, move our feet. Break our hearts with the things that make your heart break. With the things that make your heart break. Let us be your hands. Let us be your feet. Let us be the love that loves for those in need. Let us be your hands. Let us be your feet. Let us be the love. 
and longs for those in need. Spearing it move. Spirit move. Cross the land. Cross the land. We invite you to move on earth by your sovereign Spirit move, yeah. Spirit move. Cross the land. Cross the land. We invite you to move on earth by your sovereign hand. Come and move on earth by your sovereign hand. We will be your hand. We will be your feet. We will be the and all for those in need We will be your hands We will be your feet We will be the love And all for those in need Take our hands Take our hands Move our feet Break our hearts with the things that make your heart break. Spirit move, yeah. Spirit move. Cross the land. Cross the land. We invite you to move on earth by your sovereign hand. Come and move on earth. By your sovereign hand, we will be your hand, we will be your feet, we will be the love that loves for those in need. We will be your hand, we will be your feet, we will be the love that loves for those in need. Take our hands, take our hands, move our feet, break our hearts with the things that make your heart break. Spirit move, yeah, spirit move, cross the lane. We invite you to move on earth by your sovereign hand. Come and move on earth by your sovereign hand. We will be your hands. We will be your feet. We will be the love that knows for those in need. We will be your hands. We will be your feet. We will be the love. That longs for those in need. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give them a praise. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask those that need a touch and body, simply step out in the aisle wherever you're at, and uh, Pastor Craig, come on up and get the oil. We're going to anoint you wherever you stand in the aisle. Just stand right in the aisle, wherever you're at in the aisle. We'll come and anoint you right now and uh, other prayer team members. To those that's closest to you, agree with them, and uh, let's just trust the Lord. If you need a touch in body, mind, or spirit, step out in this aisle right now. Hallelujah.
Praise you, Lord. Hmm. Praise you, Lord. We just give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord, there's going to come a day when we all stand before you. We're going to see who is in heaven. We're going to see it for the first time with our own eyes. And we're going to be amazed. We're going to be amazed at the things that have been done. Things that, that people don't even realize happened. That changed the course of our history. And Lord, we're going to be amazed. And we're going to give you all the glory for all the things that you have done. And Lord, this morning, we're going to dedicate this song to you and to all of those who have served you. Lord, in Jesus' name. A dream that went to heaven And you were there with me We walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea I heard the angels singing and someone called your name I turned and saw this young man he was smiling as he came he said friend you may not know me now but then he said but wait, you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. Every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. One day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave then another man stood before you and said remember the time a missionary came to your church his pictures made you cry you didn't have much money but you gave it anyway Jesus took the gift you gave and that's why I'm here today Thank you For giving to the Lord I am a life That was changed Thank you For giving to the Lord I'm so glad you came. One by one they came, as far as the eye could see. Each life somehow touched by your generosity. The little things that you had done, sacrifices made. I noticed on the earth in heaven now proclaim I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry but I was almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord And he said, my child, look around you For great is your reward Thank 
Amen. Praise God. And you know, thank God for people that give. Um, Al, if you want to come on down and get my computer, um, get ready here. But thank God for people that gave. I just had someone pray with me. He just he mentioned before that song started, he said something to the effect that, you know, I need to be around the people that have loved me and invested in my life. Hallelujah. And, and I need to appreciate them and appreciate them more. And it's true, as you get older in the Lord and you look back, you can see there were people that invested in you. Hallelujah. Now, before we change uh, the order of the service, um, why don't we stand back up? You got your banners, those of you I gave banners to. Hallelujah. Amen. We're having a missions I'm calling it Missions Mania today. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> We're maniacs for missions. We're maniacs for reaching people for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Wave those banners. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, let me get these TC guys really good here. Oh, that looks cool. That looks very cool. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to save these and uh, with the ones that we did last year. Praise God. We're going to have a few announcements, and then I'm going to introduce Brother Murray. And um, praise God. Ladies Fellowship is immediately after the service. Our precious sister Angel is here again today. She's going to be ministering to the gals in the back. I might put a wig on and come on back. And, and uh, <laughs> Do you think they'd know it's me? Hallelujah. Okay, I don't know. Okay, praise the Lord. Bible study, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Uh, our study is going amazingly well. We're studying the book of Acts verse by verse. Coming Wednesday, uh, the Godspeed Cafe Men's Fellowship will be back in operation. Praise God. Amen. And we're going to be having uh, this Wednesday, October 20th, 2021, 6 to 8 p.m. And Mike Major will be preaching chapel. Uh, Lisa's famous Salisbury steak dinner with mushrooms, mashed potatoes, and green beans. Okay, hallelujah. It's just a little incentive, huh? Yeah, you can put a mustache on and come. Okay, amen, yeah, hallelujah. Some parts of the country, that's already happening, okay, amen. Wise Guys Gospel Band will be ministering Eric Pettit on guitar and multiple missions offerings. Amen, we have our banner in the back. Shake down missions offerings. We shake down the men 
at least once after the main offering. Praise God. My wife gets mad at me, but you know what? They keep giving money when we shake them down. If you stop giving me money in the shakedown, I won't shake you down. But the last, the last one, I think we got like, what, 300-something dollars in the shakedown. So we're doing it. Hallelujah. Amen. It's all about missions. Praise God. And this Friday night in the park in downtown Painesville, my daughter Amy Allison uh, will be ministering a worship and prayer night in the park in downtown Painesville, 6 p.m. Bring your lawn chair. Bring your lawn chair. Okay? Praise God. And um, uh, at this time, we're going to present, uh, Kathy, I'm going to need you up here. She is the treasurer of the church. And I'm going to ask uh, the men from our men's group, if you'd come on up. Guys in a men's group, come on up, Dave. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to make a presentation to Kathy. I don't know if the bank will receive this check I made. It's kind of big. I, I think it'll clog up the computer. Okay, here, move forward here. Hallelujah. Guys, get, get behind me here and uh, squeeze in, squeeze in. And I need, um, give me my camera, I need somebody to take a picture. Oh, good, here, I'll, you take a shot and send it to me. And... Oh, I was going to do that, that's why I was all here. Okay, thank you. And get some pictures. So, what we, what we do is we technically start, we don't start in January, we start in September through to next September, and we raise money for uh, missions and Light for the Lost. And this year, we're going to be able to give Light for the Lost a check from the men's group for $18,000. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Man, I am proud of these guys. Last year, we gave a check for $14,000. So $18,000 for Light for the Lost, that's not counting. We gave about $7,000 towards other missions projects, uh, but our main thing is Light for the Lost. Light for the Lost is the largest provider of missions materials, Bibles, tracts, audio, visual, print, to our missionaries around the world. I talked, I talked to a missionary in Brazil, and believe it or not, he told me they were in Sao Paulo, they were gonna do a revival in a stadium and they needed to find a bigger stadium because the first night too many people showed up. Hallelujah. Thousands of people showed up, couldn't get in, so they had to use a much bigger stadium. But he needed a million tracks, a million invitation tracks. And believe it or not, they spent a month, like a thousand people, passing out a million pieces of literature. Every other person in the city got one. And... Uh, uh, the opening night, tens of thousands of people came, and, and they had to eventually use the biggest um, um, uh, stadium, which I think held, I, if I recall, 70, 80,000. It was like the old Cleveland Stadium. So praise God, because they have no money in, their, in their, their, their own budget for materials. So we, the local church, have to raise money to do that. So praise God. So give it up to the Lord, because... The, the men are faithful. Hallelujah. Kathy, it's all yours. It's all yours. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, thanks, guys. Praise God. How exciting. Oh, thank you. Okay. Praise God. Now, we're going to take a missions offering. Not now. We're going to take it later. But here's the scoop. When we light for the lost is missions, but when you go to the restroom, we have the, the missions wall. How many have ever seen the missions wall? Okay. All those missionaries we support monthly. 20-something missionaries, we support Teen Challenge monthly. If you want to give to technically foreign missions, it's, it's on your tithe envelope right here. Mel made this up. Right there it says missions. If you want to give to Light for the Lost, it's down there. And the men in the men's group, this may sound strange, don't give today. Bring it Wednesday night because that goes towards our pledge for Light for the Lost. So guys in the men's group, wait till Wednesday, bring a record offering, and we'll give it. Hallelujah, okay? Praise the Lord. So understand missions is when you give to missions, that, all, that money 
is always allocated to our dozens of foreign ministries. If Light for the Lost is down there as well. Hallelujah. And other, other, you see it right below Light for the Lost, that can be for men's group, teen challenge, some other specific thing if you want it to go there. So understand that there's two separate places to allocate money on there. If you give to Light for the Lost, that money does not go to our foreign missionaries. Many of you give generously to our foreign missions. We need it because we have a very large budget in our church for our missionaries. And we really appreciate, because you're giving, believe it or not, we, we, when we have our budget meeting, uh, to be honest with you, we, we, we kind of hope that, yeah, I think, what, what is it up to, 16,000, 17,000, I think, for our foreign missionaries, something like that. And we hope people give for that. <laughs> and praise God, our giving is nearly meeting our budget, which is amazing, because we put it in the budget whether people give or not, and hope that we'll have enough money to pay it. But you guys have been so amazing. This is, I am so proud to be your pastor because you guys are learning how to give. Hallelujah. But we're having, I think we're having fun giving. You know, you can be miserable giving. I'd rather be, I'd rather have fun giving. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's give a warm welcome. Brother Murray's going to preach for a while. Then we're going to tag team at... After he preaches, we'll, we will then take up uh, a missions offering, okay? And I showed you, I gave you the directions. So if you want to give an offering today, uh, you know what to do. So you have uh, about 20 minutes to prepare for that. Brother Murray, come on, preach about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And this, this brother here, he knows what he's talking about because his parents were missionaries. You can tell us about that. Amen, brother. Praise the Lord. Well, I know you already had some uh, worship music, but I would like to invite you, if you like, if you don't, I'll sing solo. Not solo, you can't hear me, but solo. Okay. I'll... All right. 270, send the light. Amen? Amen. Send the, that's what this is about, right? Amen. Two seventy. And while you're looking for it, I'll start. Hallelujah. There's a call comes ringing or the restless wave. Send the line. Send the line. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light and let its radiant beams light the world forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the line, send the line, and a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the line, send the line, send the light, a blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light and let its radiant beams light the world forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, and a Christ-like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light and let its radiant beams light the world forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels like a crown above. Send a lie, send a lie. 
Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light and let its radiant beams light the world forevermore. Amen. You may be seated if you like. Praise God. Amen. You know, Peter testifies we have not been saved with corruptible things, redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from our vain, useless, worthless, and unprofitable lifestyle of the past, right? But with the precious blood of Christ. So, Peter and John at the gate beautiful in Jerusalem, chapter 3 of Acts see someone that Jesus left for them to minister the healing power of God to. And Peter says to that guy that was uh, lame from birth, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And grab him. Boom. That guy didn't have to learn how to walk. Went leaping and jumping. And yeah. So here's the thing, though, about silver and gold. You know, in Haggai, God says the silver and gold are mine. Now, ain't that something? A whole lot of folks don't seem to know that. But one of these days, we'll all give an account to God for what we did with whatever part of his silver and gold he gave to us to work with. So may God, be, may God see that, amen, we're willing to give and invest in something more important than anything else, and that is reaching out to a world where many people are still in gross darkness and they need to see a marvelous light. And send the light, speed, send, speed the light and light for the lost, that's what, that's, what, that's what this is about. Amen? Now, here's the thing, though. You know, we could all, if we all had a million dollars to give and we gave it, that would not be enough. There's something else we need to give. The Bible talks about giving ourselves to prayer. You'd have never met me. You have never met me. I would have never met you. You had never heard about me. If it weren't for the power of prayer. I'm telling you. I mean, God help us so that when we give our money and invest our money, Let's make that make let's make that give that money something to work with. Amen. And that's prayer, which releases the power of God to work in our world and work in our own lives too, for that matter. So Pastor Jim spilled the beans and let you know my parents are missionaries. Yeah, well, my dad was an evangelist. My mom was too, for that matter before God sent them to Africa, and they both felt a specific call to be missionaries to Africa. And uh, they served there from about 1940 to 1980. All right? And uh, I was born in Africa. You know, I, I, I love to say this to my Afro-American friends. I'm one, too. I was born there. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you know, this missionary kid got way off track and was way off track for about six years. A prodigal's prodigal. That's almost like a compliment to call it a prodigal. It was worse than that. But my mama 
You know, some folks, they, if there's someone in their family that's really struggling in really bad shape and on their way to hell, they don't want to even tell anybody else about it. Some, something I don't, I don't have any, I don't understand it. It's called family pride. I don't understand how that works. My mama told me everywhere she went. All right? And when it was, when going, when it was getting, like going from bad to worse, she sat down to a manual typewriter and typed out a letter. The 40 of her praying friends of hers around the world that would get other people to pray for their son that was in the Hare Krishna temple in New Orleans. Lord have mercy. Amen. And the effect of that prayer upon my life was that I ended up experiencing such heavy conviction of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I already knew these people were out to lunch, okay? I knew that. But, I mean... The Lord just wasn't going to put up with me hanging around with them much longer. So I had that Holy Spirit conviction all over me when the, they decided to take me out on a training trip to the state of Arkansas. So my dad's going to stop in Ground Square as an evangelist. As a young man, as an evangelist, he was involved in revivals that would last up to six weeks. And there I was going through Arkansas for the devil, and I knew it. The vice president of the temple there in New Orleans was going to train me up to sell spiritual sky incense for the Eskon movement. That was one of the many names they called themselves. Form of Hinduism. The religion of three million gods and counting. God help them. You know. Well, heavy conviction, Holy Spirit. I was under such heavy conviction, I was doing somersaults inside myself. I had no idea until afterwards how many folks my mama had got to be, be praying for me. Amen. But I was sure feeling the effects of it. I was like the Normandy beachhead <laughs> under Holy Ghost bombardment. And there was that still small voice. The Holy Spirit kind of prodded me and tell, let me know it's now or never. So... We stopped in the motel room that night, and I reached between the two beds there, pulled out the little drawer. There's Brother Gideon, and lo and behold, it opened up Colossians chapter 1, and I read that, and that was like a reading experience. Have you heard this story before, but some folks haven't. It was a reading experience like I've never had, never had before or since, like a vacuum cleaner, sucking those words up off the page. That's the only way I can describe it. And it was like, okay, this is, this is who's in charge, and this is who I need to do business with. Chapter 1 of Colossians. All right? And you know, there's folks around our world, you know, it's hard to imagine this. But there are folks in, in different parts of our world still that have yet to hear the name of Jesus. There's other folks that are still waiting for their first copy of a Bible in their language. Here we got umpteen zillion copies in English. I mean, come on, bro. Come on, sister. I mean, come on. Wait a minute here, right? Boy, any, 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 any English-speaking person that can read, which is most English folks, speak it. We're without excuse. Well, I just don't understand it. Well, how many more translations do you need? So we got... A world that still very much needs to hear the gospel. And, uh, you know, life of the lost doesn't just uh, send out stuff on paper. They're involved with communication and other means and ways, too. So uh, we need to get behind this. And, boy, the, what the men's group here, wow, that's, that's, amen. You're blessed. Amen. Yeah. It's more blessed to receive, to give than to receive, but we have received. And there's other folks that need to be blessed as a result of the blessing that God has bestowed on us. But this section here in Colossians chapter 1, and uh, man, start with verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. <laughs> I 
who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him, that's Jesus is talking about, were all things created that are in heaven and that are, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. You know, all right. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And we can go read on, but right here. You know, there's one thing here. Every, every, everything in the created realm of God was not only created by Jesus, not only was he involved in the creation of all things, but all you and me. We were created for him. Now, he gave himself for us to redeem, amen, what got so messed up, starting with Adam and Eve, and unfortunately, all of us have made our own contribution, haven't we? But we were created for him. You know, there's a lot of folks in this world still don't know what they're doing here. Somebody needs to help them find out. And life or loss is a part of that very big, important part of that process of helping folks find out what they're here for. Amen. Now I want to shift gears a little bit, Pastor. You know, there's only two spiritual fathers. There's the father of lies and the father of lights. James 1:17. Every good gift and every perfect gift. Is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And then Jesus identifies the Father of lights there in John 8, 44. And unfortunately, he's saying to a certain group of people, you are of your father, the devil. And the works of your father, he will, he will do. And then he describes what, what the Father of lights acts like what he does that's john 8 44 and uh you know i don't know how many of you have been dealing this week with an onslaught of the lies of the devil i mean for me sometimes it seems like it's almost non-stop But he is a liar. You know, way back in the day, Pastor, when I was, with God's help, getting my act together, Bible college days, there was a thorn in locust woods out there. I mean, I had some, I guess you could call them Holy Ghost chants that I would do. One of them was, The devil is a liar. My God baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. The devil is a liar. My God baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. I couldn't even begin to go at it like I did back then. You know, the outward man is perishing a little bit. I'll yeah. Bro, listen. They that sit in darkness, gross darkness, the Bible says, have seen a great light. We need the Holy Spirit to help us see, amen, and experience what it must have been like for those people in Palestine. It was called Palestine then when Jesus showed up there, Israel today. But uh, when the light of the world is walking around in a physical body, what's he say about himself? In John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. They that sat in darkness have seen a great light. There are still people in our world that are sitting in darkness, and they need to see 
this great light. And so anything you and I can do to advance the cause of the gospel, call it missions. Well, what is the mission? And it may seem impossible. Amen. But I'll tell you what, the message don't burn up in five minutes after you heard it. <laughs> Some of you don't know what that was about, right? You, all right, but mission impossible. Okay, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, well, it don't burn up. And it's, it's, folks, listen. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 130, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Some of us, are, we, we've been around this, you know, you know the old expression, familiarity breeds contempt. Well, God help us, deliver us from having a ho-hum, lackadaisical attitude uh, uh, towards just how great this light is that we have received. Amen? By way of Jesus Christ, the working of his Holy Spirit and the entrance of his words into our hearts and lives. A lot of folks still need to have that experience. Amen. It's the difference between life and death. It's the difference between heaven and hell. Come on, somebody. You know, so let us hold forth the words of life and let us be used of God, Lord Jesus, to share the good news with others as long as we live. And when that enemy of our souls and enemy of all mankind is going around lying and trying to make us feel like it's not, we're not doing any good or we're not doing good enough or we, we can't really make a difference and all that jazz, he is a liar! I'm telling you. How many people can remember what your life was like before you surrendered it to Jesus? Uh, is there a, there's more than just a little slight difference, right? <laughs> there's more than just a little difference there, right? Amen. I don't know if they got that in this in the hymnal or not. The light of the world is Jesus. I don't know if they've got that in here or not, Pastor. The light of the world is Jesus. Friends, what are you doing with the light that God has given you? Are you letting your light so shine before men? that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven, 176. Amen. You know, sometimes I've, I've had some Teen Challenge guys kind of clue me in on this, that personal participation seems to help folks connect with spiritual realities better than just hearing somebody else hack and yak about it. Whoops. Excuse me for living. And so here we're going to do another song, right? 176. Amen. God help me with the music here. Anybody else know this song? Amen. <laughs> Let's start with the chorus. Well, you know. The light, uh, write that right, third, third one, uh, third from the bottom down. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, 
Tis shining for thee, sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see the light of the world is Jesus. I'll let you sing the rest of it on your own sometime. Amen. So we, are, we going, are we going to keep on sharing the light that we've received with others? And uh, we got to walk in that light as he is in the light. <coughs> Amen. First John chapter 1. Jesus didn't die on the cross and pay the price for you and me so we could just barely be saved and still stumble around in a lot, a lot of darkness. Amen? <laughs> oh, no. Amen? It's in Proverbs, I think. It says, the way of the righteous shineth brighter and brighter in the perfect day. We need to continue to walk in this light and then share this light with others. One more section, though. The, 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 the testimony of Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, first century terrorist for the church. And what did Jesus do? Send the seal, te te a seal team to wipe him out? No, God had something better. A light shone from heaven round about him, right? He heard a voice from heaven saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Amen? Well, who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Now, here's the thing, folks. You know, the light did not just shine around him. It shone in him. It shone in him. Listen, we need God's light not to just shine around us. We need it to shine in us. The psalmist in 43 says, Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them guide me. Let them bring me into thy holy hill and thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto, unto God by exceeding great joy. Send out thy light and thy truth. Well, where's that light and that truth in? It's in God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Thy word is truth. And a whole lot of folks... And our world are crying out for something. They don't, know, don't even know what it is. It's our job to help them find out what that is that their heart's crying out for. Amen. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse huh, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, the Father of light, lies, Father of light, the devil, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And then he says, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, verse 6, you know, in the beginning of all everything, Genesis chapter 1, first creative act of God, what was it? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. I mean, they say that was a, the, the big boom or something. Well, there was, no, there was no air yet. You can't be no boom if you ain't got no air. To, there were no human ears for the vibration hit either. So, I mean, no, there was a lot of light, though. Just like that. Well, Paul says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You see, light, the light of God helps us to focus on somebody. We can look around a needy world, and we're part of that needy world in many ways. But the light of the gospel, the light of God, <laughs> helps us to focus on Jesus, who himself is the light of the world. Amen. So let's stay focused on the answer. 
Let's not get overwhelmed with the problems. Let's stay focused on the answer. And let's invest in helping other folks discover that answer. God bless you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to take up our missions offering at this time. And the men are coming. Father, in Jesus' name, those of you've already decided what to give, Father, we pray that you will bless it, multiply it for your glory in Jesus' name. So as soon as you guys come on up, start taking up the offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your Bible today, if you have your Bible, let's open to Mark 16, 15. He said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. The world. The whole world. I don't, it's, it, it blows me away. I grew up uh, in a Roman Catholic background, so from the time I was a, a little child, I heard about Jesus Christ, heard that he died on the cross, heard that he rose again. In my lifetime, how many times have I heard about Jesus? How many times? How many times in my life have I heard a, a sermon, a teaching? How many times? And yet, according to missiologists, there's between 1.8 and 2.3 million pe billion people, billion, in the world that have never heard about Jesus Christ. I often say it's not fair that you hear about the Lord 10,000 times when a, nearly a third of the world hasn't heard it once. And that is why missionaries are sent out. Praise God. Because people need to get saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now this picture is amazing. That is about one-fifth of the people that were at this service. This is Seoul, Korea. Billy Graham crusade in Seoul, Korea. They never completely estimated how many were there. There was between 1.1 and 1.6 million people on this airfield. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. Wow. Praise God. And I just got other pictures of crowds. Every single soul is going to spend eternity somewhere. Every single soul needs to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. Every single person on the planet. God is concerned about. You can decide whole groups of people that you've already deemed unworthy. And we do that in our prejudices. We <coughs> do it in our preferences. But God, before the foundations of the world, had already decreed that Jesus was to come and die for the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not, I don't have trouble with the world's sins. I have trouble with my own. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise God. First things first. Acts 1.8. I love this verse. You'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. We're saved because of this promise. We're saved because when God filled that upper room, 120 believers with the Holy Ghost and with fire, hallelujah, they came out from that upper room and the world was never the same and we're not the same because somebody that came out of that upper room told somebody about Jesus, who told somebody else about Jesus, who told somebody else about Jesus and praise God, who knows how many generations it really was before somebody told you Hallelujah. But if it wasn't for the fire of God in that room, in that upper room, the first thing that God did wasn't so that they could speak in tongues and have Pentecostal gifts. It was so that they could reach the world for Christ. And here's the proof. Because that's the first thing he says. You're going to have the Holy Ghost and you're going to be witnesses. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. They're waiting. Matthew 9.37. Jesus said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And isn't that true? The harvest is plentiful. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest field. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I read uh, that only, I think it's 2%, or no, it's only 1 in 20,000 Americans who say they're Christians that, go into the, that deliberately go into the mission field. It's, it's actually a disgrace compared to the whole. Because the need is far greater. It amazes me when someone can go to bed at night and they have a dream and they wake up and they have some strange name or word in their mind. I've heard missionaries tell stories like this. They wake up and they, they, they can't get something off their mind that they saw in their dream. And they have to get an encyclopedia out and try to figure out what is that word they saw. And well, that word was some little village somewhere in the Himalayas. And that person then has a fire from God to go to a place that they didn't even know existed. But you see, God knows they exist. And I want to ask you something. If God knows about some little group of several thousand people in the Himalayas that it's going to take a missionary seven, eight years to even find, to tell about Jesus, how much more does God know you and your problems? If God can take a laser and finds people in places that we don't even know where they're at, how much more does, can God find us where we're at right now? Amen. Praise God, much more. Luke 14, 27, 28. Worship team, if you'd come back. Hallelujah. 14, 27, 28. Luke. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted much, much more will be asked. And I'm going to tell you, and I've said this before, and I'm not saying it to offend anyone. We live in Menor, Ohio. We don't live in the east side of Cleveland. We don't live in Bangladesh. We live in a place that, whether you believe it or not, your home and my home, there are kings and queens at places in the world who do not live as good as you and I live. The standard of living that you and I enjoy is higher than in some countries the king and the queen does not live as good as you and I live. They don't eat as good as you and I eat. They don't have cars as nice as you and I have cars. So we have much. God has entrusted much to us. It makes sense then that we have to do a lot more with what we got. You know, the Lord's not asking you for what you don't got. He's really asking us to utilize the resources that we do. And I'm talking about resources as I shared last week, time, talent, and treasure. Time, talent, and treasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everyone, everyone can pray. Nobody can't pray. Everyone can pray. The scary thing is, in America, as churches are moving away from the Bible, they're moving away from the Word of God, they think that God is female goddess, they think that God's transgender, they think that God's this and God's that. Praise God, I've read the Bible, and I know who God is, my friends, and he doesn't have a wig on, and he doesn't have makeup, and he's holy, and he sits on the throne of heaven. Hallelujah. My God is real. He's always been and always will be. Nobody's going to be able to change who God is. I don't care if everybody in America believes that God is something else. It doesn't change who he is. You know, some of you, you got, you got emotional issues because there's people who think you're somebody and deep in your heart you know you're someone else. And deliverance comes when we forget about what everybody else thinks, worries about what God thinks, and you adjust your thinking to God's. Hallelujah. Amen? <laughs> so it doesn't matter if the whole world thinks that Jesus is some feminine thing. It doesn't matter if they think there's lots of gods. It doesn't matter if they're going into paganism. God is God. He's holy. He's always been. He created everything out of nothing. He spoke it into existence and it came to be. Hallelujah. That word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have beheld the glory of the Son of God. Hallelujah. It's a good thing. When Jesus came in my life, 
it was a good thing. I already believed in him, but I had not received him. I knew who he was, but he was no more than a historical character. If he said Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Jesus Christ, I would say Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross and rose again. I'd have got an A on the test, but I didn't have him in my life. And praise God for that Catholic prayer meeting that I went to. Because the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, the Lord reveals who he really is to those that, are, that, will, that will receive that revelation. If you're hungry to know who God really is, I'm telling you, all hell can't stop what God's going to do. Tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of Muslims in the Middle East, in countries, there's 26 countries, it's against the law to believe in Jesus Christ. You can't even mention his name. And yet there's tens of thousands of people. They go to bed at night. They have a revelation of Jesus Christ in their sleep. And they wake up empowered with hope and empowered with the gospel. They know who Jesus really is now. Some of those people have never even heard who Jesus is. And yet there's people that are, they are so hungry to know the true God that God bypasses the, the lack of freedom. He bypasses the, the extremism. He bypasses the government. And he goes straight to the heart. And America could use that too. Hallelujah. Bypass the government. Let's go straight to the Father. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Don't get me there. Don't get me started there. Hallelujah. Pray, give. We can give. We can give. We can. Everybody can give. When people say, I have nothing to give, that's not true. Get your checkbook out. I'll show you. I had an evangelist, and he said, he held up a che- he took somebody's checkbook, he held it up. He said, if you want to know if this person has any extra money, this is the old days before charge cards, but he said, I can prove to you that this this person has more to give than, than they think they do. If I have one bad habit that takes 4 or 5% of my money, right? That's money I could give for the gospel. I'm just being real. I'm not, I'm not trying to guilt anybody. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just laying out some truth when people say I have nothing. Because I've seen people with nothing give oh, unbelievable amounts. We just, we just had a memorial for our Nancy Sister Nancy the other night. And let me tell you, that lady didn't have much to give, but she gave all she had. And our lives were changed because of the the love of Jesus Christ in that that person. Amen? She paid her tithes. It was only a few dollars. But what what she gave in her heart, you need to understand that, that, that people that don't give, don't give. I remember I and, and I, I, I'll never forget this, had a, a, a couple come to our church, and they wanted me to come on visitation to their home, and I went to their home in Sausalito East. It was a fancy home right around the corner. At that time, that house now would probably be about $450,000, maybe a half million. They had a big boat on the side of the house, a new Jaguar and a Cadillac in the, in the garage, and I remember as I sat down and was talking to them, they, 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 they explained to me, you know, we just, we have... Pastor, I don't know if you keep track of the finances, which I don't. I want everybody, and especially those that visit, to know. I have no idea what goes on with the finances here in the context that if, whether you give or not, people sometimes tell me, Pastor, I didn't put a check. I didn't. I have nothing to do with the money here. That's not my business. My job is to preach the gospel. And Pastor, my job isn't to worry about what you give or don't give. I don't want to know what you give because I don't, I don't want to be prejudiced towards you because you give so little or so much. I don't even want to know that. That's not my job. That's not my business. So you need to know, and the board will back up, I, have, I don't know what's going on. That's not my job. That's not my business. But they told me they had no money to give to, they can't pay their ties. They got a boat, a Jaguar, a Cadillac, a half million dollar house. The next day, I was at a, another home of somebody in the church, and, and I noticed right by their phone, I had to make a phone call, their tithe envelope was there. And there was $5 for tithes. And that was the tithe of that person. That person had very, very, very little money. And I nearly started crying because I realized that story of the widow that gave the two mites and the rich people were standing off. And who gave more? 
Jesus, Jesus said, who's giving more, those rich people with the bags over here or that, or that poor little woman? And on paper, obviously the woman looked like she, it doesn't even matter what she gives. Let me tell you something, it matters what we give. And when I, so I'm not shaking you down for more money, I'm just telling you that if, if, you, if you're a giver, you're a giver. If you're a taker, you're a taker. And you know in your heart what you is. Now God has given me a lot of people that are, that are givers. But I don't believe we're done because we have, the Lord has blessed us. This is a very blessed church. Hallelujah. So we pray, we give, and thank God some people go. Hallelujah. Thank God some people go. We have people by the dozens in this church. They go to car shows. They go to nursing homes. They go to hospitals. They go to prisons. We have a prison ministry. Remember that guy came last week or two weeks ago? Was it last week or two weeks ago, the one that gave me the trophy? Uh, Max, he had, a, he had a car show at a prison yesterday. First time ever in the state of Ohio. He had a car show at a prison and was able to share the gospel at this car show. And the, 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 the uh, what's the guy that runs a prison? The warden talked to him and said, I'm going to talk to other wardens. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to other wardens and see if, They'll have car shows like this too. And everybody that came in had to be tested for COVID and shook down and whatever. You know, it was secure, but it was unbelievable. So here, <laughs> we got the gospel of Jesus Christ coming in through the, fancy, the car show. Hallelujah. They can't have church services right now, but they're having car shows. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not allowed to have church. You guys haven't been able to get in there with the band, right? No, no, that's closed. But you need to understand, when one door shuts, God can open another. Hallelujah. God's still into that. Praise God. Love and obey. John 14, 21. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. I don't like that verse sometimes. Because deep down, you know you can get in that little religious... What's it called, Brother Murray? Yeah, routine, that's it. That's a good word. We get in that religious routine. And it is. It's a weird thing because every week for 50 years in the history of this church, we come and we're doing the same thing. We're not reinventing the wheel. We do the same thing every week. And many of you, the worship team, some of the people on this platform, they've been doing this for 20 straight years. And you say that you, and, and it's, it's not easy because you can, you can do it out of habit. And you can lose the, the sovereign intentionality that God has when he wants something to be done. You can do something just because you know how to do it. Or you can do it with excellence. You can do it with fervor. You can do it with the power of the Holy Spirit behind you. You know, the usher staff, when they look out in that parking lot and you're coming to that door, they could just say, oh yeah, there's so-and-so again, and, and they can be kind of polite when you come in, or they can, from their hearts, look you in the eye and shake your hand or look at you and just say, man, we're glad you're here today. We all make a decision every single day how much intention we're going to have. And I've learned that if you have more intention, you've got some retention too, hallelujah, amen? You want to hold on to something good, hallelujah. Be intentional in whatever you do for God. I don't care how simple it is. I don't care how small it is. As I shared Wednesday night, a cup of water given in the name of a disciple will not lose its reward. God is going to reward an usher equally to Billy Graham. Amen. I'm reading an autobiography of Billy Graham. It's blowing me away. It's blowing me away. The, 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 this guy rubs shoulders with hundreds of the greatest people in history. It's like this guy vaulted him into a place that you and I can't even fathom. But that was his call. He's not going to be great or rewarded because God gave him this bigger task to do. He's going to answer for what he did. You will answer for what you do. So let's do it with all our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Before we close in prayer, the team's going to do one more song. Why don't we stand? Hallelujah. Praise God.
Thanks, bro.
Praise God. I want to thank everybody for coming to the missions rally today. And I'm, I'm going to ask John here to close in prayer. He's a man that came to the saving knowledge of Christ through the motorsports ministry. Hallelujah. And uh, he was on Bobby Karen's race team. Amen. Praise God. And uh, he used to be on there back when, before he knew the Lord and after he knew the Lord, it was so cool. One night, Bobby Karen won a race at the track, and we had our Lakeshore Assembly Motorsports Trophy, and John was able, able to present that trophy to, to Bobby Karen. It was, it was a cool night, wasn't it? Definitely. Amen. Praise God. Um, I just want to say thank you to Lisa and Jim for raising up people in this church that thought the Lord couldn't use them. And uh, in 2014, me and my wife got to go to Guatemala on a mission wow, cool. trip. But um, yesterday, 10 years ago, was also the anniversary of the death of my niece. She overdosed on heroin, mm. and we couldn't cancel the trip. We had everything set. So we went to the funeral, and then just on Friday, on Monday, we're on an airplane going to Guatemala. So we show up at the airport, and I'm looking around. It's like, this dude is not coming to meet us. Our, our sponsor that we're going to spend the week doing missions with. And God's just like, he's going to show up. So he shows up, he puts us in the car, and we're driving down the road, and he says, hey, do you want to go speak at Teen Challenge? And I'm like, dude, I don't even know Spanish. I know hola and a couple other, you know. I said, but I can't speak. Chick -fil -A, so man, that's all I I'll know. try and make this quick. And so we went to the house, Talk and I start kind of freaking out. And uh, one of the girls came that was on the team with us, and she said, let me pray for you. And the minute she did, I knew what God wanted me to speak. And it was uh, Proverbs 3, 4, yes. 5, and 6. Yeah. Yeah. And I was trying to lean on my own understanding to write down what, what to say. Yeah. It wasn't of me. And we got an opportunity to go to Teen Challenge and just love on the guys like we did so many times with CMA which I miss, and uh, then we got to go to the street, and we were on the street with some of the, the high-risk teens. And the teens, they were broken, and not by their own fault, just situations and poverty. And so as we did, there was one young man, he just kept asking us questions about the airplane. And it's like, why do you keep asking about the airplane? But that was the only thing it just... He was so enthralled with it. So I remember Paul was praying for him, and she said, God can do all things. And she had to do it through an interpreter. It was six months a day that we left. I got a picture, and he's flying an airplane with another ministry that got him to go to some training, flight training. But he was so impressed, or they were so impressed with his love for airplanes, they took them up on all the people in the class. Amen. Amen. Never know. So when you think, God can't use me, he can. Yeah. He wants yeah. to. Amen. He can send you to all the parts of the world. How many guys gone through Teen Challenge are now missionaries? Yes. But you know what? He can send us every day into our job. Our neighbors, our neighbors. Our neighbors need yes. love of Jesus. Yes. So I just thank you today, Lord. Yes. As we lift up those Jesus. missionaries, yes, Lord, we God. think of so Bless many them. that need, Lord God, Bless your protection, Lord. Thank you. That you be with them and continue, Lord God, to support them. Light for the lost, let it just shine so brightly in their lives. Yes, we thank you for the papers, Lord, the, the, all the books and things, Lord, that it's used for. And then even the new technology that's coming forth, yes. Lord, we just praise, praise you, Lord God. And you, as you be with us in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Get out in that harvest field. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks for coming today. Praise God. Men, we'll see you here Wednesday night.